Serve yeah, I'm going to serve these as soon as they're through, Tony. First, I need you to hold up your end of the deal. Is that a spare to spread? I can't say that when I was nine years old, I told my teacher I wanted to be a bar owner, but um, I, I long have felt that I wanted to create something special and magical that celebrated Indiana. It's the culmination of a dream that began long ago in another time and another place. A dream that included an old screen door. The front doors, the West Yum Yum Bread screen doors, I got when I was 12 years old when going by an old grocery store near where I grew up. I'm with my mom. I point out that they're taking the doors down. She's like, okay, um, so. I didn't know at the time, of course, that I was going to bring them up to Perkinsville and put them on the front of my establishment. But uh, of course, that's what I chose to do. And um, they were at 116th Street and Range Line Road in Carmel. So there's a bookstore there now. But they look lovely, don't they? <laughs> my name is Don Stretch Kroger, and we're in Perkinsville, Indiana at Bungie's Tavern. Tucked away amid a few rolling acres of farmland, Perkinsville is one of those towns that's usually described in terms of how close it is to someplace else. Not the kind of place where you'd typically expect to discover a fine dining experience. Fine dining was definitely not what Charles Bungie had in mind when he owned the place. Bungie's is named after Charles Bungie, who was the owner for almost 50 years from prior to World War II till the late 80s. Charles H. Bungie ran his tavern in this establishment. Uh, it was just a place you would come for, like I tell people, pickled pig's feet and a cheap beer, and it was nothing like it is now. Built in 1847, the building that would house Don's dream has lived a long and varied life. Dry goods store, roadhouse saloon, secret gambling parlor, and risque nightclub. But when Don risked his life savings and bought the old tavern, he immediately trashed the place and then began to fill it with all things Hoosier. It would be nearly two and a half years before Don would open his screen doors to the public. And like anyone obsessed with a dream, there were those who thought he was just a bit crazy. This picture here is probably my favorite. This is my wife Kay and that is taken as a child and very indicative of her expression when I told her I bought a tavern in Perkinsville, Indiana. Every square inch of this place has some story. I was obsessed with creating something that captured Indiana, that was warm, inviting, that was, was us. And everything from the table legs of the booths, which were shop tables at Walnut Grove High School, to the um, the doors which were cut up to make the booths themselves came out of an old Catholic rectory in Earl Park, Indiana. The woodwork on the walls came out of a uh, turn of the century lake cottage up near Crown Point at Cedar Lake at a Bible camp up there. Um, every, every bit of it was composed of Indiana related stuff. The lamps overhead were in a dime store in Elwood. But our story takes an ironic little twist at this point in the meal because while every nook and cranny may be filled with Indiana items, the menu itself is not your typical Hoosier fare. Chef Tony Holster, Don's business partner, strives to create meals which are memorable, but not pretentious. I think probably the thing I like most about Indiana that makes it most special is it being so non-special. <laughs> I mean, it, the averageness of it is its most appealing quality. Uh, when I went about creating this, I certainly looked to the pretentiousness of so much that people bring in and put in downtown or anywhere and, and tell us that we're supposed to like that, that we're supposed to like that entree shaped like a rose or what have you, and I'm, that's fine. But I, I didn't feel that that's what we really like or are, and so I wanted to create something that was not so much special as uh, very real and very, very warm. Well, what I've done with our old tip toning is what most people do with their old yearbooks. I've made it into our wine list. And uh, we have our, our nice Fumé Blancs and Pinot Noirs interspersed with prom night and pepper alleys. 
While most days, Bungie's specializes in dinnertime fare, on the day of our visit, Don was busy serving a luncheon for some friends and area neighbors. These guys can tell stories about this town. Some of them are true. And since Don's a waiter from way back, he used equal portions of grace and humor to deal with the fact that most of his wait staff failed to show up for work that day. Well, you're welcome. Serve from the left, pick up from the right. No, we don't adhere to that here. Enjoy, guys. And while folks mysteriously not showing up for work may present temporary challenges for a restaurant owner, Don actually wants to preserve another mystery here at Bungie's. While redesigning the place, he came across this old whiskey bottle containing a message written by Mr. Bungie himself. At first, Don couldn't wait to open the bottle and read the message, but then decided it was more important to keep the mystery alive. And to this day, I've not opened the bottle nor read the letter just because I'm convinced that the mystery of it is so much better than the contents of the letter could possibly be. I, I feel that that is part of this place. There's not enough mystery anymore. I love it when people yell at me for having taken two hours to get here because they can't find it. I'm convinced that that mystery will be lost too soon and that, that finding it is part of the charm. It doesn't make a lot of sense to my accountant, but um, I, I'm convinced that the mystery is, is critical to, to what people enjoy here.